Can you talk about who Kayla was? Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's an honor to be able to speak about Kayla today. Kayla was a remarkable individual. Uh, she brought a profound connection full of love to all of her relationships, whether it was to her family members, her closest friends, or refugees halfway across the world who she had never met, whose causes she worked for from Arizona. One thing that I feel is really important to know about Kayla is that she had a tremendous clarity of purpose. She saw her role in the world as to serve anyone in need who she could be useful to. And those convictions have guided her since quite a young age. How did she end up in the West Bank, Emily? You went there first? That's correct, yes. I volunteered with ISM um, for the first half of 2010, and Kayla came later that year. She had been traveling around the world, working for various organizations that year, including multiple locations in India and in Israel, as you mentioned, with the African Refugee Development Center. Um, I had been in correspondence with her while I was in the West Bank, and we had been telling stories back and forth about our travels and what we were witnessing. And she chose to go to the West Bank and join ISM after she finished her time working with African refugees in Israel. And uh, when you talked with her, what did she share with you about why she felt uh, compelled to, to go to these far-off places to help uh, others? Kayla felt connected to pretty much everybody whether it was, um, you know, for instance, me, her college roommate from the very first day, lived with her, to someone she would meet on the street, to something she would hear about in the news or learn about in one of her classes in college. She felt a very, very humble sense of connection and humanity to everybody she learned about. And if she saw a way to be useful or in service to those people, then she would do that. Emily, we also know that Kayla was a Democracy Now! listener and viewer. She wrote to us several times uh, over the last few years, urging us to cover the war in Syria. In 2010, she wrote, quote, I rely on Democracy Now! for reliable, well-researched, honest news, as I feel uh, Democracy Now! is one of the few remaining news outlets that not, that's not owned or simply fulfilling an agenda. After recently returning from one year abroad and working in Palestine with the International Solidarity Movement, among other nonprofits across the globe, I've witnessed firsthand and have been disheartened by the dishonesty in this country's news agencies. How did she get this level of awareness? I mean, she traveled to more countries than most people do in an entire lifetime. Where did that desire to help people around the world come from? And her, not only her activism, but her, you know, really interesting media analysis, understanding how people get information about the issues she was involved with. Sure, yeah. Um, as I said earlier, Kayla seems to have felt these convictions very strongly from a young age. And as she grew older, through her activism, through her work with different causes, through the classes she took at Northern Arizona University, through her travels, she had this amazing, curious mind. She wanted to learn as much as possible about how these systems economic systems, political systems work, how they affect people, and where the points of intervention were. That was something that was tremendously important to her. Kayla, I think it's really important to understand that for her, people came first and policy came after that. Um, you know, I think people are trying to understand now whether she was uh, particularly politically engaged. And I think it's important to see that she was primarily a humanitarian activist. Human needs were her goal, and she engaged in politics when she saw the utility of that in benefiting the people that she was advocating for. Were you aware that she was being held uh, because uh, the United States government tries to keep as much of information about these uh, captors, uh, captives uh, uh, away from the public? 
I did learn. I did learn during her time being held hostage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to bring into the conversation Maury Salakhan, uh, director of operations for Washington, D.C.-based Peace and Justice Foundation. Last year, Kayla's family reached out to him for help in trying to secure her freedom. Maury heads up the U.S. campaign to free the Pakistani neuroscientist Afia Siddiqui. Last July, militants from the Islamic State told Kayla's family she would be executed in 30 days if Siddiqui was not released from U.S. custody or the American's family did not pay a multimillion dollar ransom. In 2010, Afia Siddiqui was convicted of attempted murder for shooting at U.S. soldiers and FBI agents while being questioned in Afghanistan in 2008. Prior to this incident, Siddiqui said she was held and tortured in secret U.S. prisons over a five-year period. Maury Salakhan wrote an open letter to Kayla's captives. In his letter, he compared Kayla Mueller to Rachel Corey, the 23-year-old American activist who was crushed to death by an Israeli military bulldozer in Gaza, March 16, 2003. Maury Salakhan, welcome to Democracy Now! Um, can you talk about how the— story of Kayla, it gets intertwined with the story and how her family um, reached out to you. I received a call one night uh, in August of last year uh, from the pastor, uh, Reverend Kathleen Day, uh, of uh, Kayla and her family. And she walked me through the nightmare that the family had been going through for uh, about a year uh, uh, at that time, and she said that um, they were kind of in a countdown mode because they were in the last 48 or 72 hours of the ultimatum, and they were feeling desperate. And they reached out to see if there was anything that we might be able to do to help. And um, of course, I immediately expressed uh, my my empathy for what. Uh, the family and, and, and the close uh, network of friends were going through as a result of this nightmare. And I, I, my response was the best I could do was to pray and to reach out to Afia's family and ask them if they would consider writing a letter, a statement uh, addressed to Kayla's captors uh, calling for her release unconditionally, and that I would do the same. And subsequent to the conversation, that's what we did. Um, you know, I, I want to say something about um, this, the wonderful spirit of this young woman. You know, uh, her friend, when she was just talking about her, her clarity of purpose, it, it reminded me of the uh, revolutionary psychiatrist of Martinique, uh, France Fanon, in his Wretched of the Earth, and uh, a very profound observation he made in that book. Uh, when he said, each generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. What, what makes Kayla, as it did Rachel Corey, as it does also Afia Siddiqui, as a, as a young, um, uh, enterprising student, um, so unique was this, this fire, this passion uh, of having recognized what their mission in life should be. And, and going after it, and infusing that spirit uh, in the consciousness of others. Uh, she's a very unique uh, uh, and, and blessed soul. And, and once you issued that uh, letter uh, on, be, on behalf of the family, uh, what happened uh, subsequently? Well, the ultimate—the uh, the date of, uh, of threatened execution came and went, and— um, you know, God only knows what factored into uh, the change of mind or heart of Kayla's captors, but she wasn't executed on that date. And uh, uh, the, the family of Afia, both in Pakistan and her brother here in the United States, and uh, Afia's uh, uh, a network of, of supporters, uh, we've been in sync with uh, praying for and hoping for uh, something positive to happen around uh, this issue surrounding uh, Kayla Mueller. Uh, you know, I've been in in contact, uh, con a constant stream of contact with the pastor. I 
Uh, I, in fact, we just spoke, uh, I think, the last time, uh, the day before yesterday, by telephone. And uh, I did speak as well at, at one point to the family, to Kayla's mother and her father uh, a couple of months back, and uh, just letting them know that uh, they have a lot of people uh, that were praying for Kayla and her family outside of their own uh, uh, network. Thank you.